for our visitors, my name is Beatrice Hoithaka. I am a daughter in this house, and I'm born again this morning. I normally say that I, I, I preach the word of God when I'm born again. You know, you can preach as a duty, but you may preach because I'm born again, and I speak what I know, not what I've been told, but what I know. And this morning, I want to honor the authority of this house, our bishop, and I want Pastor Alice, and my co-pastors, especially Pastor Brian. Next, next month, we'll be one year in this place. <laughs> uh, when we came here last year, and Bishop said uh, that he's trusting for God to give him wisdom. People that are going to Shiloh, and them that are going to remain in the main campus. We didn't know. He never even told us. But when behold, we were brought here with Pastor Brian. We want to thank God for you. That next year will be one year. By the grace of God. It has not been easy. But the Lord has carried us through. We, are so, we had so many consultations with Pastor Brian. Since we came here last year. Allow me to share this. Because of course I shared it somewhere yesterday. Since we came here last year. This was our first youth service. Down at main campus. We had many services, but this was our main campus, main youth service, and the first service here. And since last year, up to next month, that will be one year, I've only preached once in the youth service. And it was by default, because Pastor Brown was unwell. This is the reason. In the first service, Hataluga, it's a challenge. Coping with those people, hey, language is, is a barrier to me. But I want to thank God. But once, once, once I preach in the youth service, to bring, to connect now. But I want to thank God. So far, so good. We are not complaining. We want to thank God for our bishop. He has a praise report concerning me and Pastor Brian. Iyashilo. And we want to thank. It is not us. It is God. It has not been easy, as I said. But by and by, next month, we are one year. Who is like our God? We'll be saying next month, we'll be 10 years. That is our God. And we want to be in this tent. 10th Tent, anniversary, tutakuwa kwa yi tent. Believe you me. Because next year, after one year, something is cooking. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. That's what was the introduction. We want to go to the word of God. Yeah. Our theme this year is redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. And this morning, by the grace of God, I want to share on a topic. Secret sin. Secret sin. And I know there are so many sins. Sins that we see with our eyes and we judge. But this morning, I want to enter into the heart of God. What he sees. Not what us we see, but what God sees. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 90, in verse number 8. Psalms 90, verse 8. In the New Living Translation. The Bible says, you spread out our sins before you. Our secret sins. And you see them all. This is David. And he's saying that you spread out our sins before you. Our sick, not only sins, but our secret sins. And you see them all. Please give me the message translation, the same verse. The message translation. The Bible says, you keep track of all our sins. Every misdeed since we were children is entered into your books. That the Lord keeps track. The Lord keeps track. Not of our goods, but of all our sins. Because there is no way God can dwell where there is sin. There is nothing safe about secret sin. Jesus' exposition of the law. It's a devastating blow against the lie that image is everything. That is what has made the church to stagnate. That image is everything. Friends, I want to let you know this morning that image is not everything. What is everything is Jesus Christ. What is everything is holy, holiness, not image. Our Lord taught repeatedly that sin bottled up on the inside concealed or hidden from everyone else's view, it carries the same 
guilty. The very same guilty as sin that manifests itself in the worst forms of ungodly behavior. Those who hate others are as guilty as those who act out of their hatred. And those who indulge in private lusts are as culpable as wanton adulterers. Allow me to bring two stories of two different people. These two different people, one was hiding something and the other was hiding someone. These two people, they are different. It's a lady and a man. One was hiding something and the other was hiding someone. One had a promising future and the other faced certain doom. One was a soldier, the other was a prostitute. One destroyed his family, while the other saved his family, or saved her family. One brought defeat to the nation, while the other was used to save the nation. And out of that illustration, I think most of you, Bible scholars, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about a man known as Akan and a woman known as Rahab. Both were hiding something, but what they were hiding forever changed their lives. What are you hiding this morning? In the book of Joshua, Chapter 2 and verse number 4. Joshua 2 verse 4. Then the woman, this is Rahab, then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. This is Rahab. And for those who doesn't know this story, Rahab was a prostitute, unknown. Not even a renowned, the way you know business people in this nation. She was a renowned prostitute. But these, two, these men who were going to spy the land of Jericho before destruction, they landed in the house of Rahab. Rahab did not see customers, but she saw servants of God. And out of what she saw, and how these two men, these two spies, it saved her family. The other person you get in the book of the same Joshua, chapter number 7, verse 20 and 22 to 22. The Bible says that, And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel, and this is what I have done. 21. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wage of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth, in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. 22. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver under it. When they were told to go and destroy everything, I can thought, this is too pleasing in my eyes. And that another translation said that this is what I wanted. This is what I've been longing for. Friends, what have you been longing for in this journey of faith? Because there's no way we can prosper in the, uh, in, in, in the church of God when we have stagnated. We, 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 we remain stagnated because of the sin that we have hidden in our hearts. As human beings, we judge on the outside. That this one is a good brother. This one is a good sister. But our Lord sees inside those secrets that it's only you and God who knows them. And the Lord is saying this morning, I want to walk with you. Joshua asked Achan, what have you done? He said, I have sinned before the Lord. If you read the whole verse, we go to verse 24 to 26. This is what happened. And this is what may be happening to our lives and the lives of our family members. Verse number 24. Said, then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wage of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them 
to the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? Friends, when you sin, you make the whole body of Christ sin. Look at now what is happening in Shakahola. Everybody is against the church of God because of only one person. That is what happened. We, don't, we are not talking about the, the, the church in Shakahola. What about our church? The church that is in your heart. What have you hidden? Let's go back to verse 20, 24. 25, sorry. Verse 25. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? He didn't say, why have you troubled yourself and your family? He said, why have you troubled us? That means the whole body of Christ. The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with the stones and they burned them with the fire after they had stoned them with the stones. Then they rest they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Acre to this day. Friends, we are living in the last days. And my prayer for you and for me is that you make up your ways. Make up your ways. What you are doing, those secret sins, may ruin your family, first you and also your family. Look what happened to the whole family. Even the cattle, the sheep, the tent, everything that concerns Akan. Look, look what happened. Allow me to bring three, three reasons why secret sin stands out to be horrible. And then I'll be done. Number one, secret sin is, is secret sin is horrible because God sees the heart. God sees the heart. Sin loves secrecy because sin grows in the dark. When you meet somebody at night, when you are growing up, you say, "I met with the people." You will be asked, "When you are muizi." Because we knew the only person who travels at night are thieves. But how many thieves do we have in our hearts? Scripture tells us in the book of 1 Samuel 16 and verse number 7. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. This is the time that God sent Samuel to go into the house of Jesse to anoint a servant. Somebody who will come after Saul. And the Lord told Samuel, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. This is the same God that we are serving today, friends. Yes, we come to church on Sunday. How about your week from Monday to tomorrow until on Saturday evening? How is your life? We congregate here on Sunday. And the Lord is here every Sunday to give us a word. We are here on Wednesday to give us a word. So, because we can be equipped for this journey. But what about your heart? And I want to submit to you this morning. That salvation is not an umbrella. People say that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. We judge from the outside. Just like Samuel. When he saw the son of Jesse, he said, this is the one. Because he matches whatever he wanted. But the Lord said, no, I don't look on the outside, but I judge in the inside. Since you are born and born again, how has been your work with God? Are you growing or have you stagnated? Our God is not a God of retrogression. He wants us to progress because where we've been called, it's not backward, it is forward. And we're only saying that backward never, but forward ever. Friends, where are we going? Are we mark timing? We come here. Our slogan here in Shiloh is a place of breakthrough. We cannot give you your breakthrough. It is you to work for it. We'll be saying a place of breakthrough. But you are still the same that one year ago. Because you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord is saying this morning, if I come today, if I can just happen to come this place today, will I have a handful of sons and daughters? How is your heart this morning? Those secret sins.
No sin, not even a whispered curse or a fleeting evil thought is hidden from God. Even the mind. We say you are going to serve the Lord with the whole of your mind, your heart, and your strength. Bible says in the book of Romans that be renewed from transforming of your mind. Friends, we are seated here. But the Lord is saying, when I look down, how many can I count on? Because he searches the heart. The secret sins. Yeah, there are so many things that we do. What about your heart? The secret sins in your heart. In fact, we realize that God himself is the only audience for such secret sins. We have so many audience here. But for secret sins, it is only God who is the audience. Therefore, it's only the one who can get you out of that. We don't say it is sin. We say it is a habit. We say it is a weakness. Friends, sin is sin. Either colored or black and white, sin is sin. And we might be less inclined to write them off so lightly because nobody sees them. But there is a one. Yes, nobody. Because we are us. We are the bodies. Nobody. People with the body. But it is one who sees the secret sin. And it's the only audience. The audience of one. The secret sins. Romans 2 verse 16. In the New Living Translation. And this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming when God, through Christ Jesus, will judge everyone's secret life. Not the open life, not the public life, but the secret life. And that day is coming, friends. We are nearer to that day than when we began. We are nearer to that day than when we believed. May you be found in that day. He will bring every act of judgment. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The Lord will bring every act of judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. So, if you are doing good, continue doing good. If you are doing evil, continue doing evil because God will judge every good thing and every evil. Ecclesiastes 12, verse number 14. For God we bring, not the angels, not the pastor. It is God who will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Therefore, whatever you are doing, I want to encourage you this morning, if you want to do good, continue. That is a reward. Because everything shall be judged. If you want to do evil, continue doing evil. Because everything shall be judged. And everything has a reward. Not only... That. First Corinthians 4 5. First Corinthians 4 5. Therefore, in the New Living Translation, please. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. We are quick to judge. And the Bible says, don't judge, lest you be judged. And when you judge yourself, you cannot be judged. The Bible says, so don't, judge, don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. Don't judge me. And I'm also not going to judge you before the Lord returns. For he'll bring our darkest secrets to light. What is your darkest secret, my brother, my sister? They'll be brought to light. Utazion useme, isi si mimi, lakini kumbuka hivi. God does not lie. Everything shall be put in the light. And there are kutenda mema. Wait, and there are kutembea usiku. Kwa sabu usiku watu kuoni. But the Bible says, please bring it back. For he will bring our darkest. You know our darkest? You enter into a house. Put off the light and close your, your eyes. That is the darkest. Are we together? But the Bible says, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and we reveal our private motives. Yes, when you are doing that, what was your motive? Private motives. Then God will give each one whatever praise is due. And our God is a just God. He tells you, yes, 
These are your deeds. Go to this side. These are your deeds. Go to this side. Secret, darkest secrets to light and reveal our private motives. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Luke 12, verse 2 to 3. Luke 12, 2 to 3. Yes, Jesus said, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed. Give us in the New Living Translation, please. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed. Whatever you do under that blanket, when nobody sees you, it shall be revealed. Time is coming. This is not a time, but time is coming. When everything, not some things, but everything that is covered up will be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Come to think about this. Just hold it there. If today, I normally ask the Lord, if today the Lord can remove all the... <laughs> Andoe ukuta na andoe mabati. Tunaza ona mambo, mambo inakana muna gani. Fikiri ya tu hivi. Saatisa ya usiku. Mungu wa mwe. Leo. I want to bring light. Ni andoe giza. Saatisa ya usiku. Andoe. Inaitua nini? The, the, the walls. Andoe walls. Na andoe mabati na andoe walls. Kila kitu kwa hivi uchi. Tunaza ona nini? People that you thought were born again. Unasema, sa hindi wamifika kwa muganga, diyo anapigua ana, ana ramburi. Sa hindi wamifika kwa kurumazira, diyo anafanyua hivi. Friends, to God, there's no darkness and there's no light. Everything is in the open. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known, not to some, but to all. Let's continue. Verse 3. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you say shall be heard in the light. And whatever you have whispered, you know a whisperer, behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Can you imagine? Mutu amesuma juu ya hii. Tunampatia microphone. That is how it will be. Those who think they can evade shame by sinning in secret will discover one day that open disclosure of their secret before the very throne of God is the word shame of all. You thought you are doing this because it is secret. But before the throne of God, it shall be open to all. It is folly to think we can mitigate our sin by keeping it secret. That is my sin. We want to it. Imagine keeping a sin secret. And this reminds me of three, three friends that they were walking together. And these three friends, uh, they found a, a baby cheetah. It's a cub. And one of them said, in a and remember this is a cub, a baby, a baby cheetah. So he took it. Thank God they were men. Wakachukua kaka kuwa kumfuko ya ya jacket akaweka hapo. And they walked and they walked. Uh, you see, there were three friends. The rest, the, the two friends were before him, so he was behind. And e e kakab kana muchuna. Unajua ni munyama ni munyama. Ata mtoto wanyoka ni nyoka. This is how we hide the sin. They walked, they walked. This kakab was able to, to, to penetrate mbaka ikafika pale roho yuko. And this man fell and died. When the three friends came to see, the two friends came, what had happened, he was bleeding. They opened the, the jacket, lo and behold, the kakab ran away. That is how we hide the sin. Yes, you can be fi- you can feel pity for this brother, but that's how we hide the sin. Itakukula, itakukula finally inakuwa. <sighs> it is double folly to tell you ourselves that we are better than others because we sin in private rather than in public. Look at our nation. 
We normally say that our nation is 80% Christians. Look at the corruption rate in our nation. You take somebody in an office, this person goes and corrupts. And also we are saying that we are 80% Christians. 80%. If you could be 80% Christian, corruption in Kenya could be 20%. But now see how we've been rated. People are suffering because people that are in the office are not genuine. You are a Christian on Sunday because you have a hidden sin. We look at you, you're driving a very good vehicle. We envy you. But because you have a hidden sin inside you, you know how you maneuver your ways to get this money. How you maneuver your ways to live in that machinate. How you maneuver your ways to have that huge bank account. Because you have a hidden sin. And secret sin. Friends, I'm not against any... I don't know if I'm going to go to ya kupanda. Unujua yangu ni ya kuingia. Nataka kupanda. Unajua ile gari ya kupanda. Hata mimi ningependa kupanda. Am I Pastor Brian? Hata mimi ningependa kupanda hiyo. But I want to walk right. Because I know after all said and done, I have a destiny. Singe hata mimi ningependa kukaa hizo manyumba, kabla ufike kwangu, nimeambiwa na kama askari kama watatu. Uko na mgeni. Hata mimi ningependa but the Bible says, it's better you go to heaven with one eye than go to hell with the two eyes. And it is a very, it is very height of 42. Convince ourselves that we can get away with the sin by covering it up. For how long will we cover sin, friends? For how long? The Lord hates sin. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he can hear you, but your sins have made him not to hear you. He can hear a voice from very far, but he cannot distinguish. Is that so and so? Because there is sin between you and God. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 28, verse number 13. 28, 13. New Living Translation. That people who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Do you want mercy? Please don't cover your sins. All sin is an insult against our holy God. Whether it is done in public or in secret. And God, who beholds even the innermost secrets of the heart, sees our sins clearly. No matter how well we think, we have covered it. Can you imagine covering sin from your maker? Covering sin from your creator. And it's, you know, before God, there's, there's no dark or light. He sees you just the way we are seeing one another now. And you can imagine somebody trying to, see, to cover sin. And because they are the innermost part of your heart. Number two. Because sin in the mind is a fruit. Because sin in the mind is a fruit of the same moral defect that produces deeds of sin. Sin in the mind. We don't know what, we are, we, what I'm thinking, what you are thinking, but we'll see the effects because of what you are going to do. When Jesus said, hatred carries the same kind of guilt as murder, and lust is the very essence of adultery, he was not suggesting that there is no difference in degree between sin that takes place in the mind and sin that is acted at. No. To him, sin is sin. Scripture does not teach us that all sins are not equally enormous. No. Sin is sin. Either done in the secret or in the public. Those, that those sins are worse than others is both patently obvious and thoroughly biblical. Scripture plainly teaches this. For example, when he tells us the sin of Judas was greater than the sin of Pilate. John 19, verse number 14. And the Bible says, Then Jesus said, It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, Look, here is your king. The one who delivered Jesus to the torturers is not better than the one who said, crucify him. 
all those are sinners. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But in the sermon on the mount, Jesus was pointing out that anger arises from the same moral defect as murder. Anger and murder. Don't point a finger to a murderer if you are full of anger. We are all sinners. And the one who lasts, who lasts, suffers from the same character flow as the adulterer. Wewe unatamani. Na mimi ninaifanya. Sisi wote tuko pamoja. Bwana asifiwe. Furthermore, those who engage in thought sins are guilty of violating the same moral precepts as those who commit acts of murder and adultery. You think I'm better dead? You've already killed me. How many murderers are in the house of God this morning? You look at somebody and say, Master, who are you? He's good for nothing. You've already killed that person and you are a murderer. In other words, secret sins of the heart are morally tantamount to the worst kind of evil deeds, even if they are sins of a lesser degree. The last whole person has no right to feel morally superior to a wanton fornicator. The fact that she indulged in lust is proof she's capable of doing the same thing. If you can hit somebody, you are capable of killing that person. Number three. Because hidden sin involves the compounding sin of hypocrisy. Because hidden sin involves the compounding sin of hypocrisy. Those who sin secretly actually intensify their guilt because they add the sin of hypocrisy to their offenses. And you know, nobody knows that we were in Monafic. Na hakuna jela, unenda kuona mtu, hiyo jela inaito wa uko, kwa sabu alifungwa na makosa ya nini? Ya unafik. But you can go to committee, this one stole, this one killed, yes. Sins that can be seen and heard. But hypocrisy, we don't have any jail or any remandies that they are there because of the sins of hypocrisy. And that is the worst sin, and that is what is eating the church. Hypocrisy, how are you? I'm fine. Na tunapenda ile kifua yenye Judas alipatiana akija kumuza Yesu. That is the sin that is eating the church. Hypocrisy is a grave sin, grave sin in its own right. Hypocrisy is a grave sin in its own right. It also produces an especially deb debilitating kind of guilt because by definition Hypocrisy entails the concealing of sin. Look at the story of Tama when she was raped. The brother lived with that thing for more than two years until the appropriate time and he went and killed somebody. The secret of hypocrisy and the sin of hypocrisy. And the only remedy for any kind of sin involves uncovering our guilty through sincere confession. If you just tell thought, I've come, forgive me and cleanse me. I want to put away this secret sin, and I want to embrace you. The Lord is waiting for you with the arms wide open. Hypocrisy therefore permeates the soul with a predisposition against genuine repentance. Hypocrisy will never draw you to go and repent because it wants to have an abode in you. You live there, you are Christian, 20 years, 30 years, but there is a root in you of sin of hypocrisy. That is why Jesus referred to hypocrisy as the living for the Pharisees. We get it this the book of Luke 12, verse number 1. The living of the Pharisees. In the meantime, when I give us a new living translation, please. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, beware of the east of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. Nobody can judge. This one is a hypocrite. We are all going, going to heaven this way or this way. No, somebody told me that you can go to America in many ways. Uganda. 
unaweza pita Ethiopia, unaweza pita Tanzania, but the station wapi ni America. But to God, to is only one way. And that one way, hypocrisy is not in that one way. Bwana asifiwe. No matter who suggests to you that appearance is everything, don't buy that lie. That appearance is everything. Don't buy that lie. As a matter of fact, your secret life is a real litmus test of your character. You want to know somebody? You want to know the kind of somebody? The secret life will reveal to you. Do you want to, to know who you are? Take a hard look at your private life, especially your innermost thoughts. Those that nobody can see apart from you and God. Even the devil doesn't know. It is only between you because the devil just waits for you to speak a word and then he magnifies it. The only person, it is only you and God. Gaze into the mirror of God's word and allow it to disclose and correct the real thoughts and motives of your heart. The real. You gaze into the mirror of God's word and allow it to disclose and correct the real thoughts and motives of your, word, of your heart. It is only the word of God. My time is right. Allow me to share this and then recall it. There was a woman this woman was born again. Yes. There's a woman. I will not use my example. There was a woman, and this woman was born again. And she had a... You are, you are a mother. Let me use a mother so that I can room for and get from it. This mother... Uh, and she was born again. And she had a post. Maybe she was a chair lady or women's guild or mother's union. Somebody, somebody prominent in the church. Uh, I don't know about her husband. Let me talk what I know. One day, the son left the country. And the mother was left. The, almost the whole church went to the airport to see this son of because of the, the, the post that the mother had in the church. This young man went to that country. That, you know, the, outside the country, there are so many, out of Uganda, out of, out, of, out of the country, Sindio, out of Tanzania, that young man lived there many years. Uh, and he was, the mother was very supportive to the church because the young man who sent dollars, as an investor was sitting, as an assembly in America, who joined America, Pandigani, America, Nikubwa. So one day this mother fell unwell, and lo and behold, she passed on. But this young man was not born again. Uh, and then he was called and told, Your mother rested. So he had the plans to come back home to bury the mother. And this young man was not born again. Uh, where he, where, where, when he went to the air, uh, the, the, the a, a, a airline, the only day he got was the day the mother was being buried. So he came in the morning, the church went to, some of the members went to the mortuary to pick the body of the mother, and others went to pick the, the young man from the airport. And then they came straight, they didn't go, didn't go home, they went straight to the church. The church was packed. Come and get cool up, up, up to get share. This is small. Let's talk about our main campus. The church was parked inside, outside, the parking this side, and the other parking Kwakiwanja because of that lady. Somebody who had a name in church. Are we together up to there? Have I lost anybody? Can we go home? You want to hear? Yes. Uh, they came. The sermons were read tributes, appreciation, and finally the mother was laid to rest. This young man said, before you bury my mother, because of what I have seen from the airport to here, I want to, live my, uh, to give my life to Jesus so that one day I'll meet my mother in the Hallelujah Square. So this young man gave his life to Jesus. And they, amen, you can hear amen. Yes, they buried the mother uh, and life continued Three days after the burial, the young man, now he's born again. 
He told Jesus, I would love to see where my mother went. Because if that is what, is what will happen in heaven, I want to be where my mother is. And the Lord is so good. He took him into a dream or a vision. And he took him to heaven. So now from the gate of heaven, Jesus held the hand of this young man and they walked together. They passed heaven. And the young man said, no, my mom is there. You are, they are singing there with my mother. I said, no, allow me to lead you. You said you want to see where your mother is. So they walked together with this young man. They walked together. They walked together. They reached a point and, the, and Jesus told him, no, your mother is here. So I'm like, where? In this pit. Not in hell, in this pit. And I want to, to, sh I want to show you why she's in this pit. She called the name. The young man called the mother. Mom, and obviously you know the, 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 the voice of your child. He said, yes, son. I said, I am here. So Jesus told the young man, I want to bring your mom up so that you can talk with her. Jesus dropped a rope and said, their rope, th that rope, climb with that rope, you come and hug me. So the, the mother caught hold of the rope and started climbing. What a new hold. When we went to, me, I know how I can, I can climb a rory through a rope. Yes. a rope. Unapanda nayo. So Jesus dropped the rope and told the mother, now, the son said, climb with that rope. So the mother started climbing. climbing. In the middle, you see, you can see your son and see Jesus. And down, there are other mothers. They started climbing. You know, when you are in the middle, there's another one left. So the other mother started climbing with the, the other rope. They climbed together, together. And this mother, the mother to this son who had a name, looked back and saw other mother and said, Wacheni kupanda, uni mzoto wangu si wenyu. And na kaanza kutupa nini? Migu. Lo and behold, kamba ikakatika, nakarudi chini. Jesus told this young man, that is where your mother is, because your mother's heart was full of hypocrisy. She doesn't want other people to climb with the, with the rope. And that's why she's aware. She's there. When I was a fever, sin loves hypocrisy. Because sin grows in the dark. Maybe you are here this morning publicly living in the promised land of salvation. Because salvation is our promised land. You are living in the promised land of salvation. You are going to church as you came this morning. You are staying away from the big sin. Because you know there is big sin that can land you in jail or cause your license to be suspended. But privately, privately, you are hiding secret sins. Friends, there is a difference between privately struggling, battling, fighting, praying, fasting, and confessing your, sin, your sins, as opposed to living in it, enjoying it, hiding it, and getting better at not getting caught. Because you've never been caught. You enjoy sin. You live in it. In the same way, there is a huge difference between a sheep falling into the mud and a pig playing in the mud. The sheep will cry in the mud and seek ways to get out. But a pig loves the dirty and enjoys it. Temptation in itself is not a sin. But when we allow that temptation to conceive, it gives birth to sin. God gives us the opportunity to deal with the secret sins because he doesn't want any one of us to perish but have everlasting life. When it comes to the issue of sin, you have the chance to repent 
and go on. Yes, you fell. Nobody falls and sits there the whole day. You fall and stand up and continue with the journey. Nobody misses the way and continue saying, you know, I miss my way. No, you go back to the crossroad and look for the way and get going. Allow me to pray for us. When every eye is closed and every head is bowed, how many times do we pass up the chance to get the secret sins off our back? How many times? How many times, friends, do we pass up the chance? You take the chance, pass. You better let the chance pass that repent the secret sins. The Lord is saying this morning, I am here. If you can only point out the secret sins in you, I'm ready to forgive you. It is only me, your God, and you that you can point out the secret sins. Is it jealousy? Is it hypocrisy? Is it adultery? Is it corruption? The Lord is saying, is it hatred? The Lord is saying this morning, I am here. And I want to cleanse you because I love you. I love you more than you love that sin. I love you more than that, what that sin can do to your life. I love you. And I'm ready to cleanse you. I'm ready to pay the price. Because I did it all on Calvary. Because I love you. Until I said it is finished. Unless you pick it, I said it is. Because I nailed it on the cross. Check your heart. What sin? Secret sin. Yes. You can pick something from somebody and you know it is a sin. That is a sin that can be seen. But this one's secret. It is only you. Like Akan. Like ah Rahab. It is only you who knows what you've eaten. David said that your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. What is in a secret place? The Lord is saying, I'm ready to remove from that secret sin to a secret place because I love you and I need you. Heaven is not complete without you. Only one condition, allow me, allow me to sweep that heart. Allow me to detach you from that secret sin. Allow me to hold your hand. Allow me to walk with you. Because sin, sin will lead you to hell. But I want to walk with you so that I can live with you in eternity. <sighs> Father, we thank you. And we bless you. It's only who searches the heart of a human being. Father, search our heart. Those secret sins to your Father that have made us to stagnate. We cannot reveal to anybody. We are concealed them, Jehovah Father, in our hearts. Jehovah God, cleanse us. We want to bring them out into the open now. Open to you, Jehovah, because there's no secret sin before you. There's nothing secret before you. To us, we can hide our parents. We can hide our spouses. We can hide our friends. But to you, dear Father, nothing is hidden. Therefore, this morning, in the name of Jesus, we pray to your Lord that you come. Help us to reveal them. Help us to conceal them. Help us to put them in the open. That we may obtain mercy so that we can walk together with you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you. You're such a loving Father. Even with all years that we have hidden these secret sins in our hearts, you still love us. And you are still saying that you love us. Even this morning, you could have consumed us to your father and we go to hell. But your father, you've given us another chance to live so that we can, oh God, we can repent these sins. We can repent these sins so that we can walk with you. This day is our day of salvation. We surrender to you, Jesus. 
Jesus, yes, there's no secret. Before you, there's no secret. There's no secret. Jesus. Yes. We are raising our hands this morning. Get us from this pit, dear Father, so that we can live with you eternally. We want to see you in the hallelujah square, dear Father. Oh, help us to fear sin, to fear sin, because everything shall be brought to light. We thank you this morning and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.